I understand democracy. I've been elected. I've been elected under two, two voting systems. I've been elected under proportional representation and under first past the post. So I understand that the other house takes a priority over your lordship's house. I understand that. But at the same time, the way that the other house rejected our amendments so casually, so arrogantly, hurt me. We worked for days on these amendments, and we refined them, and we discussed them, and I hope that we actually convinced the minister and the whip that we were right, I hope. And yet, the other house decided that it was of no value. And so I'll be voting for any votes. I will be voting content today for anyone who wants to put forward their motion. And I want to speak particularly in favour of um, the noble lady, Lady Heyman's uh, air pollution amendment. But as I say, I'm, I'm voting for all the amendments today. Um, on air pollution, this is an issue I care very deeply about. And we are talking about changing the law to make sure that our toxic air becomes safe to breathe. This is a health issue. It's also, of course, a social issue. And we should understand that uh, many people in our towns and cities suffer very badly. And of course, then it also becomes an economic issue because it hits the NHS when those people have to go into hospital with, um, with lungs that are very badly damaged or um, through early death. Now, throughout the health crisis of the pandemic, the government constantly said that they were being led by science. Well, this is another health epidemic. It's toxic air, and it's time to listen to the scientists again and to the World Health Organization, who say we need to bring our air pollution down to the levels in this amendment. And this is not an abstract issue. The young, um, the young girl, Ella Kissy Deborah, has been mentioned many times in your Lordship's house, somebody who had d uh, death from uh, air pollution on her death certificate, the first person in the world. And she died and suffered and died because of the toxic air where she lived and in, around her school. And, you know, one child's death, it's a tragedy, but there's probably thousands more who suffer with their lungs and possibly die young that we don't even know about. And the House of Commons reason says the powers confirmed, conferred by Clause 2 should not be limited in the manner proposed. Well, why on earth not? I don't understand. Without this amendment, it's just left completely to the Minister's discretion as to what, uh, what level to set the target. So that discretion is absurdly broad. And personally, I don't trust the government to do the right thing on air pollution without your Lordship's House intervention. And quite honestly, the other, the other place should have brought their own amendment on this. They should not just have swept our amendments away. They should have actually acknowledged the work, the effort, and the expertise that we put in, and they should have brought their own amendment. But instead, they just returned to the government's original wording. Now, I know that your Lordships do not like to defeat the government too often, particularly in ping pong. But I think this bill is an exceptional one in terms of scale and in scope. And I think that there are an, a, an exceptional number of issues that the Your Lordships ought to ha ask the House of Commons to consider again. And I very much hope that we can pass this amendment along with all the others and that the other place will at least consider a compromise amendment that takes the issue of air pollution seriously. Now, I also want to speak in favour very briefly on D1, the interim targets. Um, they, um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand what the Noble Lord the Minister was saying. I have huge respect for the, for the Noble Lord the Minister, but quite honestly, when he's reading out, uh, if we have interim targets, they won't allow us to get to the, um, the final targets. That's the whole point of interim targets, that, that you can actually measure your progress for, to the long-term target. It felt like an Alice in Wonderland speech, um, and I, I feel very strongly that the noble lady, Baroness Brown of Cambridge, has been generous to the government and added an element of compromise to her amendment. I, I would not have done it, I would not have compromised, but I can live with it and I do support it. And so I feel very strongly that we should... Um, 
ask the other place to look again at this issue of interim targets as well.